Everybody. Wow. Hello. We're gonna get started Hello. soon. Hello, my yeah, people who make gigantic rapper edition. Can I get a code? Thank you. If you hear this. Well, if they heard it, they didn't understand it. Thank you. You're just gobbling down glizzies over there. Up, oh, up, oh, don't don't look at it yet. Don't look at it yet. Say it for the show. But uh new new games on SO. Ooh. Hey, okay. okay. Ooh, baby. Alright, um we turn off this movie. Well, I've been a good boy. Give me something good. Give yeah, me something Robin. good. <laughs> I, just, I literally stopped watching the stream you were doing today because I was getting annoyed by you commanding people and saying everything wrong about the game. Like, Thanks, what? Christian. <laughs> oh, you got annoyed by something, dude? That's weird. Yeah, everyone's crazy <laughs> of you. <laughs> I'm characteristic. Uh, so, I'm still watching. What is that? Mm -hmm. Mike is going to kill me. I was typing too much in chat. Mike was gonna, uh, you know, I mean, we won. So mm -hmm. I don't know. And Mike did a good job of like keeping our, our heads on straight yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, Mitch led us to victory. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm a hero. <laughs> <laughs> more people should be saying that. Yeah, more people more should be people like should Mike be Minotti. Saying this. Yeah, I, I, agree. Know, I don't know why, but when I know a lot about one thing, it annoys me. When I, 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 I trust me. Yeah, yeah, we're all, we're all, come on, look at this is four know it alls right here. Come on. <laughs> yes. Yeah, me no way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know it's a problem that I need to work on him. Uh huh. We're, we're all trying uh -huh. to be better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, let's see here. Oh, did I delete it? Uh, once I have chat ready, I think I should be good. I'll have to test the music, of course. Uh, oh, and, I have to tweet, though, shit. I, have to tweet too. Okay. I guess I'll do that while we let Gamera 2000 play. Oh, that was, I, was, I was trying to figure out. Yeah, this is I've heard it recently. Gamera now. What's that? What's that, Christian? Watching Gamera stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be watching a lot of Gamera stuff. I did start watching some of that, like I said, the Mystery Science Theater 3000 episodes. All right. Oh, that's the Eclipse show was like. Right? Gamefire. I always I like the look of Crash. I think he's uh, very 90s, and I think Crash 4 is fun. That's a good game. That checks out for you. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. What was I doing? Did you hear that? Uh, I, I declared for all of us that Giant Bomb is a pro. Kingdom Hearts website on the dump truck today. Oh, I did not hear that. I mean, like mathematically, the majority of us at least like Kingdom Hearts. I feel like I can like really pull down that average, just really hard. Oh, you do big hater energy. Big hater energy. Yeah, you do. You do a lot. Don't worry. You're you're the Jeff Bacalar when it comes to Kingdom Hearts. Don't you worry. You got it. I was so uh, I was so mad when Lexi was thinking about person and you were making that face. I was like, oh, oh, oh yeah.
And you watch that follow show? It's pretty good. Which a couple episodes. So right here. What's it called? Yeah. Oh, Fallout. Fallout. Yeah. Fallout. No, I if I watch it. any other TV show right now, it would be X Men. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I've been watching it. I've been seeing clips, and it looks phenomenal. It's I think. I think I'm just. I'm. I think I'm just gonna say fucking start watching it week to week. Screw it. It just seems too good to ignore. Oh, like a normal human being. Who the Kinda fuck cool. is the normal I, human I being? Know, I, I'm. I hate when people are like. I, I hate when things uh, drop as a binge watch. I want it week to week so I can I talk do. about it with my friends. I'm like, you sound annoying. You sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's gross. I you don't know, talk, a season of TV see... shows like four hours people like come on i don't want to i don't want to see you talk about tv shows keep that to yourself that's private um wow. oh, that too <laughs> what a hater yes that's also my hater oh, hater right up. definitely a hater yes without a doubt um yeah. okay <laughs> think we are good let's test Don't the music these people talk about the shit they're like god damn it let's get to, let's start this podcast well you guys hear that they hear yes. that all right i think that is means it we are good. enough I just turned it up for both of you, for both the audience and y'all. All right. You know what? Let me turn my camera. It's not something Mike usually looks at, but usually just good to have it. Okay. I'm going to count us in. You ready, Mike? Mikey is ready. All right. We are getting started in five, four, three. internet you're busy let's do this welcome to the game mess decides podcast this is the podcast where we decide everything about the world of video games so you never have to think for yourself i'm your host jeff grubb and with me is mike minotti in today's episode uh some tough stuff with dead space 2 i'm sorry <laughs> and who would run a better 90s arcade me or mike we'll get to all of that wow. eventually there's also some updates on some other stuff we'll get to that later in the episode in the meantime mike how are you doing yeah, I'm doing good. Been real busy today. Basically, been going uh, nonstop. But that's all right. Day like that every once in a while is not the worst thing in the world. So uh, being being productive, I guess. How about you? Yeah, exact same. I didn't sleep well last night. I didn't get to sleep until real late and then had to wake up early, take the kids to school. And then it's been nonstop ever since. I'm like, I always like it when we can fill, especially the giant bomb day with like a lot of fun stuff. So, you know, we did, um, yeah. you know, we did stuff at Discord Town Hall and we did Helldivers 2. And then you guys but that did, was the day the Discord Town Hall happened? Discord Town Hall happened. Don't worry. They asked plenty of questions about you, Mike. Don't worry. Oh, I missed it. Oh, is it juicy? Oh, lots of juice uh, for, for the Mikey. Oh, Do you guys post that later? I want to listen to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll post it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, but, but then it was like, oh, man, I got to get stuff ready for UPF tomorrow. So I'm still working on that. And it's trash day, and I got to give the kids a bath. And then I was supposed to be on someone else's podcast, and I did that for like an hour earlier tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, and the Red Wings are playing, so it's like it's nonstop over here as well. Uh, but you're yeah. right; it's mostly the good kind of nonstop. It's good to be this kind of busy, so no real complaints. Although I'm looking forward to like just kind of sitting and staring at some point in my future. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. How, how are things? How are things otherwise, Mike? It's fine. We had a really nice day a couple days ago. I like, went on a walk and I felt really good. And it's been kind of rainy and shitty since then. And, you know, I don't mind a little rain, but it's been gray for a while now. I'm just, I don't know. I'm really ready for summer. I think I'm ready for some like warm weather and to really be outside, really be grilling, doing all that stuff. Uh, I've never been a big spring person. Spring is such a wishy-washy season. To me. It's, it's weird because I love fall. That transition season is great to me, and spring is just trashed here for whatever reason. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but let's talk about what, what really matters. What's your favorite OJ movie? <laughs> I guess I guess <laughs> Naked Gun. <laughs> yeah, I, mine too. Yeah, I yeah, watched, I watched his Naked movies. Are getting... there more? <laughs> See he in anything else but those? Uh, he's definitely in other stuff, but really that's what he's known he's for, right? He's in other stuff for sure. He's, yeah, he's was, a big show. was he in anything after the trial? Because that'd be incredible. Oh, I'm sure he was in some like European funded film. Like, yeah, some Roman yeah. Polanski movie. Who knows? Um, yeah, that, that that guy died. Weird. Um, yeah, that was that one was not uh, Blight Club or Delight Club's fault. Not at all. Um, no. Yeah, I've even got doing that one. So. <laughs> I got around to like, finally <laughs> this to do list. Like, 
Oh shit, I left that guy alive? Oh man, I messed yeah. up. Um, yeah. Is that curse lifted now? So are we safe from now on on Black Club? Whenever you play, you do Glad Black Club. No, I, I think I think this is completely outside of that purview. I think the Black Club curse is for dignitaries and people of oh, a certain stature. Right. Um, so I don't think we've escaped that quite yet. Yet, so we'll see. Hmm. Uh, all right. You can get more from Mike and me by joining us at the Discord uh, by going to GameMess.net. You can also give us a good rating wherever you are listening and hit that like button on YouTube. Both, both of those things help people find the show. If you want to ask a question, you could drop a super chat during the program. We'll get to all of them before the end. You can do that here on YouTube. Thank you to Carlos Ayin, who is insane in the rain music on YouTube for the use of our theme songs. Thanks to 1UP versus CPU for our artwork. You can find more of them at 1UP versus CPU.com. We are on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and wherever pods are caught. Thank you to our mods and support us by going to patreon.com slash game mess. That gets you access to private channels in our Discord, the monthly Q&A, participation in our monthly game club discussions, one month early access to new episodes of Game Mess Jeopardy and Columbros, and of course, all of our shows ad free. That's, uh, that's patreon.com slash game mess. Um, like I was thinking, I, I, I like my little thing at the, at the top. I just, it's a nice way for me to get in the mood of like Santa, it's the internet. You're busy. Let's do this. And I, I know sure. you don't, I, I, I know you don't care about it. Uh, but I think I'm at a point where I'm like, I started saying that cause I'm like, people just want to get into something right away. They don't like meandering. And then I saw a video on YouTube that was 38 hours long recapping every episode of Beverly Hillbillies. And I'm like, maybe, do people actually want to get into something and get out? Maybe that's not true anymore. Uh, maybe I was wrong all along. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, look, Jeff, you do what you got to do. <laughs> I'll do what I got to do. Whatever I, makes you feel most comfortable, what, what is the longest YouTube video you've ever watched? Oh, there's some pretty long ones. Like, uh, like, like part of the meta now is all the YouTubers will make right. compilation videos that are like three hours long. Um, like Sean Shonson has done some long ones on PS1 games where it's like, here's I'm going to talk about every single uh, Namco game for the PS1. Right. And I, I kind of do love that shit because I am somebody who like I'll go in bed and I'll and maybe this isn't the healthiest thing. I will sit in that bed for like a few hours at night playing stuff on my switch or like fiddling around on my phone before I will actually fall asleep. So I like having like to me just having one video on instead of like having to like. Oh, and I have to think about something else to watch because this sure. 20 minute video. I've actually had a point where I kind of like 10 minute videos. So I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's worth my time. I don't think I'm going to click that, which is funny because wasn't there a time when videos had to be like 10 minutes yes, or 10 shorter? Minutes, 10 minutes was the, the maximum length on YouTube for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not wasting my time on that. Yeah. I, that, that is the, I mean, I've watched a lot of like definitely, um, of video essays that are four hours long. I mean, I watch them in chunks sure. most of the time because I don't have uninterrupted time like that. Uh, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. All right, uh, let's actually get into it. Just a couple things I want to talk with you about this week, Mike. Uh, that Dead Space 2 thing happened, um, and uh, boy, that was weird. That was weird how that all went why down. Yeah. Why don't, why don't you recap that for maybe maybe the people who don't know, who yes. aren't following what, what's going on when you were talking about this on Giant Bomb. It's an interesting saga. Yeah, so Dead Space 2 uh, is is not happening. That's like the big story. That's the big takeaway here. Um, and it was like some one of those things when uh, uh, the, the studio that was working on Dead Space 1 remaster remake that did that, uh, EA Motive, Motive yeah. they are now uh, officially making that Iron Man game still, but now they're also part of the many teams that are working on Battlefield. That was like the new announcement there. Of course, everyone was looking at like, this probably means we're not getting another Dead Space. And I asked around a little bit. It's like, yeah, we're not getting another Dead Space. This is something that they looked into. They had, they did some, I mean, God, I'm like afraid of how to phrase it now because of everything going to happen. But they looked into that and they, they there was definitely people doing that work of looking into it. And uh, they put that on the shelf. They're not doing it in, anymore. And then of course, uh, so like uh, someone goes to EA like, Jeff Grubb says you cancel it so they can work on Battlefield. And EA's like, well, that's not right. That was, there's no validity to that story. And then, of course, like more reporting comes out. Jason Trier does his piece and it was basically like, yeah, it's exactly what what what, what Grubb said, even though Jason Trier is like, oh, no, it's uh, that that the rumor isn't true. I'm like, what? I, what rumor do you think it is? I'm so confused here, but whatever. Uh, it was very odd. And at this point, I'm like, OK, that just kind of got messy. I I bet EA regrets commenting in the first place because they just blew it up and made it even bigger. And at the end of the day, everyone still recognizes 
we're, we're not getting Dead Space 2. They're not making that, and, right. and it's not really under consideration anymore. Right. I mean, that was the funny thing, was, like, the first thing coming out. And, you know, like... Uh, Look, I'm, I'm, you know, I got to defend my boy a little bit here, and this isn't me going out or trying to beef with any other journalist. God, please know, uh, uh, everyone's just doing their job, and nobody did anything wrong there. But you know, like the IGN story, it's like, uh, you know, EA says this isn't true, and you know, according, according to our own reporting or whatever, like a Dead Space Two was never even considered, and it's like, well, that that can't be right. I mean, what do we mean by considered right. here? Uh, like the ending of Dead Space One has like the sequel bait, and also had like the sequel bait that was kind of clear, like, hey, it's not maybe not gonna be that Dead Space Two. Exactly, yes. And then that was kind of like you know the thing with with the, well, that was like the one thing with the Schreier thing was like, well, actually, it wasn't really gonna be a remake of two, but like a and, new and, game. And it's like, well, yeah, know, ever, everyone knew that. knows that. Yes, everyone knows that. Like that, it, that was always part of what was happening with Dead Space because they were like, hey, we can reconfigure that universe and do something new going forward from this new baseline. So yeah, it it was weird. Um, I mean, it, it, you you came out, everything you said was true, and people I don't know got mad and exactly got yeah. real again. It's like the semantics, like well, well like what is really pre production or what is being considered? It's like look, well, you can figure that out. I'm sure EA has their own idea of what that means. And to them, it's like what well, that game never even really existed. We didn't cancel anything. And Jeff never said, I don't think you said the word cancel. I think you said shelf. Yeah, or, or yeah what have I, you. if I did, it was definitely just like in a, a colloquial terms. Um, but like, yeah, yeah, it was never green lighted. Sure. Um, but they they had discussions about it. And it like what? And it was the concept. Of course they did. Yes, of course they did. Like that's. Why just, wouldn't you? Yes. <laughs> well, of course there'd be. It would this, be like it would something. be insane if they didn't. Like that would be really weird. No, this, this industry doesn't think about sequels very often. Right. Jeff. That's that's a rare, rare occurrence these days. Yeah. Um, I guess really the, then the question is, Mike, how are you feeling about EA's strategy overall? I mean, I don't think it's great that a team that could have been doing something fun with more Dead Space or anything else is now also working on Battlefield, a franchise that just does not get my hackles up in any real way. Yeah, I mean, right. Dead Space is this really interesting, uh, cool franchise. Uh, and instead of working on that in the last that Dead Space remake was fantastic. They are now being thrown at the superhero machine. They're being th thrown at the battlefield machine. And man, with Battlefield, in, in, in this industry, the way it is, you have like kind of the one bad release. It's hard to get back from that. The last two battlefields have struggled now, right? Yes. Um, like, when is the... Wait, I'm almost shocked that the thing with Battlefield is like, well, maybe we should do something smaller and really go back to basics with Battlefield. And instead, it just seems to be more... Throw as many resources at this thing as possible. If we just keep throwing money at it, maybe someday, somehow, it'll be our call of duty or as close to it as we're going to get. And maybe, but I just don't know how you really get people excited about Battlefield again when, I mean, honestly, like the, the, the word association with Battlefield lately has been failure. I mean, Battlefield 1 was the last Battlefield people felt good about. That was a long time ago. Right, and since then we, we got Battlefield 5 and then 2042, right? That's what happened? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah five, right. and both of those just did not really hit very well. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just, it's such a tough path forward for Battlefield uh, to, to not, like, matter again it can matter to a lot of people but to be able to play with the biggest uh, other games in that space um and I, I just don't see how do you how do you twist this franchise that is this one thing these big premium price games that come out every couple of years into this ongoing live service thing that can have content that's as interesting as anything that's happening in fortnite or something else like yeah there's going to be people who want to play a military shooter that has that vibe but they're at a point where it's like yeah, but like Call of Duty Warzone is free and I know what to expect from that. And sure, it's got some wackiness to it, uh, but I know it's going to be fun and I know it's going to be there and I know it's going to be reliable. It's actually pretty hard to compete with reliable these days, it feels like. So, um, I mean, good luck to them. I, I just, I'm bummed that we continually end up like we sort of circle around and it feels like the circles get smaller and smaller each time where it's like, Okay, everyone's got to go make the biggest games. Everyone that works for us is working on the biggest games. It's like, okay, you know what? Let's step back. Let's do more single player games. Let's let's uh, make a new initiative to like really push on that stuff. Try to diversify our portfolio. Oh God, the numbers weren't astronomical. Circle back, retreat, retreat back to that old strategy. And it feel you know we we definitely had like uh with the time of like Mirror's Edge and the games at that time from that interesting period the, of the EA. original Dead Space. That was the, the original Dead Space, thing. right? And yeah. it's like. 
there were big attempts then, and then they sort of retreated. And now, well, and then, like they're both, yeah, and it was annoying with Beer's Edge because it was good. People liked it. It wasn't this giant sales hit. So they waited just a little bit too long. And then when they did make a new one, it was a, a reboot and not a sequel, really. And it was just confusing about what that even. Uh, oh, I'm salty about Beer's Edge because yeah. Beer's Edge was is one of my favorite games. It's so good. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I, it, I think it, EA is in the same position as all these companies where we're just like, look at them, you're like, what is this strategy? And it's a risk adverse strategy that is trying to find growth in an industry where growth is not just like hiding around the corner waiting for them it is something that they are going to have to dig at it's like you know the concept of peak oil right it takes one barrel of oil to get a barrel oil out of the ground so it's not worth it anymore we're kind of at peak gaming now where these companies at least for AAA publishers and and console manufacturers where the amount of money it takes to produce a game is about equivalent to the amount of money they'll get back from selling that video game. Um, and so they only are going to take risks on the things that are the biggest and most uh, and I mean, most obviously can succeed. I mean, is it not? The, I mean, used to be, hey, you make a sequel, at least you kind of save money because, you know, you're using some similar tools and stuff like that would be why you can make a dead space too but it's not enough I, to I don't save know if money it really anymore. works like that yeah. anymore right like dead like what spider-man 2 costs like 300 million dollars really, really even though it's point. a sequel yeah god and you, that, you, you really reused a lot of that, that city somehow. yeah like that right. one's like an obvious one where like clearly you could save a ton of time with that but it's like uh no you have to put so much content in there and all that content is so labor intensive that maybe it doesn't work that way and even they probably did save money on that game and yet it still costs that much and even if they do save money, it's it really at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, it is about growth. And so uh, saving money is one thing. Finding new money from new customers is the other. And they're that's what they're going after. I just I mean, I'll, I'll keep repeating it. I don't see how Battlefield is the solution to that. But I suppose it's more of a solution to that than more dead space. I guess I just it, that bums me out again. Yeah. And I mean, guess uh, I hope it works out. I mean, I, I used to like Battlefield back in the time. I'm I'm sure. so old that Battlefield 1942 was my game, yep. really. But uh, if it could hit again, that that'd be nice, I guess. Um, let's see. Star Wars Outlaws is coming out August 30th. That is pretty exciting to me. Um, I am like, like kind of not trying to pay attention to the reaction to this stuff because it feels like a, a minefield where people are going to be like, oh, she's not pretty enough, the main character, which definitely has That's happened. And Of course it's happened, and that is the most egregious case of just, you can't get excited about any girl who isn't just Right, uh, I'll just say, a, you know, like a sex blow up doll, yes. right? Kind yep. of like with uh, I don't know, it's insane. That's a very pretty woman. Insane. Yep. Yeah, and 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 she like people point out like looks like Ripley from Aliens. It's like yeah, she looks exactly like yes. that. And that's a yes, beautiful looks woman. Looks exactly like a character who was like a, a, a sexy sex sci-fi icon. Yes, char- a, like well, I don't sci-fi even know. I don't sirens. Know. Yes, sci-fi <laughs> sirens. Yeah, <laughs> heavy metal two thousand. Uh huh. Um, but but ignoring all that stuff there are there are a couple other controversies here people are like hey season pass that's annoying uh, i'm used to it uh i'm sorry <laughs> that's just where i'm at and then um it requires a, an internet connection to download the rest of the game if you get the disc i'm also used to that i'm not saying these aren't problems people should com- continue to criticize these things uh because it does force these companies to at least reckon with it a little bit uh but they save a lot of money usually by doing these things and they make a lot of money by doing the season pass and that's sort of how they justify licensing an ip like star wars I look at that game, I think it looks pretty solid, Mike. I'm not expecting the world from it, but if they have, like, that vibe of you actually are an outlaw just trying to scrape by in the Star Wars universe, and then the um, sort of a faction system is decent, I'm going to be happy, I think. I don't know. How are you feeling about it? I'm pretty excited for it. Um, I think Massive does good work. Uh, I like the vision a lot. I like their Avatar game even, and I think... Honestly, it looks like they're being a good deal more ambitious with this than they were Agreed. with the Avatar game. Um, you know, we, we get a lot of Jedi based Star Wars games. Uh, it's nice to get one of that of that kind of scale as the Jedi Fallen Order titles. But it is more that bounty hunter rogue uh, kind of character that you're playing. I'm going to get my hopes up a little bit for this. I hope it's going to be great. And then the other thing is, OK, August 30th. This is like one of the bigger games coming out in the second half of this year. Things are starting to take shape a little bit. We get this. Maybe that if they've, um, you know, Dragon Age, if that still comes out. Um, well, there's a couple other big games that have been announced. Uh, I'm trying to, but, but yeah. But how are you yeah, feeling no, about the second half of this year right now at this point? 
Yeah, I mean, it seems a little sparse. Now I'm trying to race my brain and remember what else is coming out. Uh, you know what? I'll uh, do the definitely, it's Indiana Jones. Um, Indiana Jones. That's and, that's definitely yeah, it's one. A lot of it is, is Microsoft stuff. I think probably Avowed is more second half, right? Uh, is that this so year? Uh, God, I can't remember. But Avowed? I Avowed. think so. Yes. You know, I'll just... I mean, Hellblade is very soon, and then I think Avowed and Indiana Jones are later, but I might. Indiana Jones certainly is. Yes. Indiana um, Jones definitely is. Yes. Right. So. Uh, God, well, two of the biggest games this year are going to be Indiana Jones and Star Wars, I guess. Uh, that's not shocking. Yeah, I mean, it, right. I mean, that's what that that is the vestige of the the period that we were just in, where it's like you got to be all IP all the time, yeah. and it feels like well, that's not a guarantee going forward from a company like EA, although they are making a lot of uh, Marvel games. I mean, I think it's definitely going to feel a lot more sparse than like last year, where you had something like an Assassin's Creed game came out. And everyone was basically like, don't have time to even think about that. Right. Yeah. Like, sorry. Uh, yeah. Chat's pointing out Assassin's Creed Red is is probably coming out this year. Uh, and it's like, yeah, that a big new Assassin's Creed game feels like it'll do just fine this year uh, as opposed to last year. So, um, yeah, I mean, beyond the games that we've mentioned, there isn't much uh, like Frostpunk 2 is in July and I'm excited about that. Yeah. But like these big, like marquee triple right. games. Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl, September 5th. We'll see uh, Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2. That is a, a definitely a B game. And that's uh, parentheses positive for that. Um, yeah. And that's those. I mean, Black Myth Wukong is also in August. Like that's the level of game sure, we're talking yeah. about left for this year. So, yeah, we are a month and a half away two, two months away um from summer game fest things probably will pick up then uh we probably will have some b bigger announcements um but as it stands right now i'm glad that star wars is coming in august that's great uh but overall yeah. it looks like it's slowing down and that's just fine yeah man this might be a big uh mmo year for me again uh because final Fantasy 14 is getting dawn trail right wow it's getting it wow it's getting its expansion and a lot of content like i was on yeah, the, what's, the what, world what's, warcraft yeah, subreddit jeff I was on this World of Warcraft subreddit. The vibe is positive. Yeah, I was, I was, I was it's noticing insane. that. Like they're like, "Hey, the remix and stuff. What? what how does that work? I mean, give me the short so, version." Well, so uh, Cataclysm is coming to Classic, but then right. in retail, they're also doing this kind of Mista Pandaria like like Redux experience where you can just sort of level through Mista Pandaria as it was, and there's like some new gear and whatnot. And then when you're done with it, it's just a retail character that you can play as. Um, and oh, everyone's and real excited. And they're timing that for the return of the game's return to China, too. So that makes oh, sense. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. right. And Mr. Pandaria is like a, that's a, even that's though like about, yeah. at the time, a lot of people didn't play it because everyone was burnt out on Cataclysm. Uh, that's a very well thought of expansion these days. Um, you know, people like the last expansion and the new one's already coming. So, you know, Blizzard's been having some struggles lately, but World of Warcraft, they really righted that ship in a big way. Yeah. I mean, and it's, for as troublesome as that project must be for them, uh, at the end of the day, where that game settles in in terms of subscriptions has got to be huge. I mean, oh, um, somebody they, they had that number. Somebody like found it not too long ago, and it was like five million or something. For OK, War, that right? was way more than I was even expecting and, when yeah, I, I said I, huge. I didn't believe it when I saw it. And then like other people confer or corroborated that or reported on that. And I mean, now keep in mind again, because now you have World of Warcraft and classic. Sure. So people are subscribing for both things. Um, okay, it was 7.25 million reported a couple weeks ago. Again, that is so high, I almost don't I, believe it. Right, but but the point is, is like if it's a million, that is still more than enough. A just great. A million at what is it, fifteen dollars a month? Something like eleven. I forget okay. something somewhere in that range. Still, like that is, for running one game, like that is easily worth it. Right. Uh, um, oh, every other like, game would kill for that. And you know what else they added to World of Warcraft recently that everybody seems to like a lot? They added a Battle Royale mode. They just did that. <laughs> it's a pirate-themed Battle Royale mode called Plunderstorm. People seem to like it. I actually need to try that out at some point. Just, no, they said just talk to Blizzard, and they confirmed it. So, yeah. Wow. Okay, uh, they, then. So, I mean, so getting back to the point is, writing the ship is, like, there's no other option. They have to do what it takes to write the ship. There is too much money at stake. That's so, that's so impressive, because for so long... I mean, the numbers were going down from like the right. height of the, Wrath like of the Lich King, to 30, like 15, 12 or something like that, to the point where when it got under 5 million during Warlords of Draenor, they, they just stopped reporting it because right. it was kind of always like, oh, it's going down. So we and people just assumed that like it must be like below 3 million at this point. And now like to, for it to rebound like that, um, it's very impressive. Um. All right. Uh, there's these Nintendo Switch games uh, ready to go. I, uh, there's some other oh, stuff. All right. Yes. Are you Are you ready? 
Um, do you need me to pull it up, or are you going mean, to tell I, me? I, there's a link here. Uh, I'm just like Sean didn't want us to look. Sean, do you want us to do, do anything special? No, he just wants no, us to react uh, live. Yeah, okay. I just want a live reaction, and uh, I have what? a little addendum to the story as well. Once you see what they are. Okay. All right. I'm going to click it, and let's find out what they are. All right. Tell me what it is. All right. Oh, so. It? From Nintendo of America on the Twitter platform, three Super Nintendo Entertainment System classic titles are now so, live yes. for Nintendo Switch Online mem members. Um, all right. Let's see. Super R-Type is the one I recognize oh. the most. That's pretty okay. cool. Uh, Wrecking Crew 98, which is a Japanese-only release. Oh, the jet that was like a Satellaview thing. <laughs> really? That looks that's very interesting. I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, that's fascinating. And then the Amazing Hebereki. Hebereki? Yeah. Hebereki? Uh, H-E-B-E-R-E-K-E. -E -E. What? I don't know. These look like uh, fucking yokai. I don't know. Looking at it's a Sunsoft the uh, game. screenshots, it looks like maybe Power Stone, but uh, Super Nintendo or Power Stone adjacent. Whoa, okay. That sounds fucking yeah, awesome. May maybe no items, but type of fighting. Yeah, look, like. yeah, it's an arena fighter. What the yeah. fuck? Okay. So an addendum here, as I mentioned. Uh, so Amazing Hebereki was something that they already had in Japan. So we have a bit of a culture exchange going on here where they're getting a game that we had already on SO. They're getting Battletoads and Battle Maniacs. <laughs> it seems like a weird choice for Japan uh -huh. SO, but they're also getting a game that we won't be getting because it would be too much. Uh, Marvelous. A.G. Numa's uh, directorial debut sure. on the Super Famicom. Yeah, that very clearly would end up inspiring Link to the Past, that game. So, wow. Interesting little one there. This game looks um, nuts. Amazing well, head rocky. This is very okay, I guess. Uh, sure. This is fine. What's up? Nothing, nothing crazy. What's up with this, like, different different people get different video games, god damn it. <laughs> like, what's going on? Why don't they just, like, release it, like, worldwide? What's mm, the... I don't know. Nintendo's is weird Nintendo is the real this? answer. I mean... All right. You know, there's... I'm sure there's uh, licensing agreements, all this other boring stuff, but the real answer, Christian, is Nintendo. They're just weird. Yeah. That's all there is to it. I wonder if I was. I'm pretty sure Wrecking Crew 98 was like a Satellaview thing only. Uh, I like. It looks uh, like it was a cartridge release. Based on a cartridge, so. I guess maybe I'm making that up. Then yeah, it looks cartridgey. I okay, like but it was only Japan. I like our type quite a bit. I, yeah, I had a big um, uh, shooter phase recently. I mean, the thing is with our type, if you're really into our type, there's probably more interesting art types you can buy for yes. not too much on your Switch right now. But still, I'll take it. Yeah, exactly. Are you more of an R type or Gradius guy? I'm more of an R type guy. Gradius, Gradius. You yeah. know what I want is Parodius. I want a Parodius collection, yeah. which is just, it basically just plays like Gradius, but it's silly, so it's better. These all just sound like STIs to me. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I guess the last thing is um, I was just on uh, the, the, the Mooch's show, and, you know, like, like always, they're like, hey, we're. Uh, freaking out about xbox uh they, they gotta sell stuff or, or else we aren't gonna care i'm like well, who cares if you don't care who cares um th their their big thing right now is hey that next gen hardware that they keep talking about um from from like sarah bond and phil spencer of like hey we are gonna have next gen hardware relatively soon and it's gonna be the biggest technical leap ever um how are you gonna feel about that thing if it does come out in 2026, Mike? Are you gonna be someone that's like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll pick that up? Or are you gonna be kind of like, well, maybe I would I should just take that money and upgrade my PC instead? It, it would be, look, I probably will still, cause I'm a sicko, but it would Same. be like the first time I'd really feel like, like how much do I really think I got out of my last Xbox? Yes. Honestly. And how much would I've been better suited just say putting $500 into my PC? Now, what if- honestly? they have the handheld uh xbox that has a really strong Shh. ecosystem yeah i mean yeah, that'd be more appealing to me uh same honestly because like especially at that point i probably would need to upgrade from like my roger ally which i do that's like my favorite one right now and honestly like i i, I imagine a portable xbox would be pretty similar to a rock ally in a lot of ways yes i think at the end of the day uh the improvements that would come to an Xbox handheld would likely show up in a Roger ally in a lot of ways. Um, although by the time we get an Xbox handheld, it'll be significantly more powerful and capable uh, than what the Roger can do. And definitely the steam deck. Um, cool. I, I was just wondering, I'm curious because that was a little bit of the conversation we were having. Yeah. And I was, I was like, at this point, I just, I don't, I mostly don't care. I'm fine. They, that these are Xbox's problems they can solve them. And if they don't, they don't, if they do, they do. If they come out with the product that I'm interested in, I'll buy it. I'll tell you what, here's the key. Make it good. 
If they make the games good, I'll buy them. I'll, I'll play them. If they make the system good, I'll buy it and I'll play games on it. Um, and I think that they have the capacity to, capacity to do that. Um, and I also I also think they have the capacity to uh, bungle it, which they've been able to do several times before. So we'll see. I guess I just I would be so curious. Um, I mean, look, I I know people talk out of their ass sometimes. I'm hoping there's something behind the bravado of like it's gonna be the I, biggest jump ever. I think there could. I think there will be. Um, I just don't. I'll tell you what. They, whatever they're doing, the, there's a couple things they shouldn't do. They shouldn't launch head to head with the PlayStation Six, and no. they shouldn't release a console that is basically a PlayStation Six but with fewer games. I think that's, yes, I think those are both good points. I think if, as long as they don't do that, as long as they're like looking at like we got to stop doing that, and they're like, okay, well, if we aren't trying to do that. How can we get creative and a- approach the, um, the, 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 you know, the console battle from the margins? And I think if they do that with a handheld and a very powerful system, um, yeah. I think that, that, that sounds pretty good to me. And I'll at least be very interested in it. So, all right, uh, Mike, that does it for the big topics I want to talk about. Let's take a quick break. And then when we get back, we will do the super chats. Does that sound good? Sounds fantastic. Right back after this. All, All right. right. Uh, Let's cool. do it. Yeah, are you good, Mike? Yeah, I'll give you super chat. So you super chat. Any, yeah. All right. All right. Let's go back into it then. And we are back. And Mike, there's a bunch of super chats. Why didn't you read those to me? Yeah, from Carlos Lopez. It's a two part question. Uh, first thing here I'm becoming jaded. I think I've realized this is a first world hobby, kind of filled with toxicity and privilege. Did you see Yabara tweet about tips? I feel repulsed by his idea. Is this how they think of revenue ideas? Uh, Elden Ring doesn't need tips. Why do they continue to squeeze the only people consistently uh, buying games? It's tremendously unserious. Something has to give. Yeah, I mean, okay. I yeah. Well, well, I don't actually, I'm not super sure what uh, this is referring I'm, to. What did Yabara tweet? I don't know. I'm going to look it up too, Mike, but I, my, my guess Yabara here is, is that you're supposed to. Blizzard. Right. My guess here is, uh, is that you probably are supposed to be tipping developers, I guess. Uh, for I looked it up and uh, he, he raised the idea of what if you could optionally tip developers more at the end of a, he said, single player game. So if you Man. felt it deserved more than $70, you could optionally tip $20, it is- $10 more. It is. It is incredible. <laughs> so, like that thing that happens to me at Subway now, where I have to give a tip. There, yep. man, I can't believe our solution is more more tipping culture. Yep. I, and and I've, I'm someone on the record like I enjoy tipping culture at places where I have service workers in front of me, and I can pay them to be like make sure like hey I get it you're working hard and this company's not uh, providing it for you. Um, you're a goddamn multi-billion dollar corporation. Yeah, what no, are you talking about? It's just so messed up. It's again, no, the money should come from the bottom instead of the top. It's insane. It's insane. It is, yeah. And it is, inf- it is actually kind of infuriating for Mike and Barr to even suggest that. Yes. Absolutely not. It is. Uh, it's a, well, of course, it's a non-starter. It's not something that would happen. Well, I guess enough. don't say nothing. Mm. nothing. Yeah, I know. Don't say it couldn't happen. Uh, but it's a crazy thing to say and suggest. Um, but uh, here, here, Carlos. I get getting jaded. Um, I think the best thing to do is uh, get away from these wider scenes, find your crew, hang out with them, come hang out in the Discord more, Carlos. Uh, we, we, you know, we're we're good there. People are, you know, we have smaller conversations. Uh, talking to Jan, who was uh, just at WrestleMania, maybe be like, I'm glad I'm in the gaming scene and not the wrestling scene. Not that he had a good time. But like the wrestling, uh, like uh, coverage people there were like, yeah, they they were even more uh, uh, in um, uh, s- sort of demanding and uh, abrasive and entitled than anyone in gaming. And so, okay, so at least we're a little bit more mature than that other thing over there, I suppose. Not that that's like a, a high bar to clear. Um, but I, I just think there's ways that you could control your environment a little bit more to make you feel better. And then at the end of the day, if that doesn't solve it. So then you're jaded. Go, you go like other hobbies are there. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with putting gaming aside for some time. There's no shame in that at all. Ali Miracle says, you know, given things as of late, it makes sense. It's the year of shadow. <laughs> uh huh. I mean, yeah. uh, it, it really does explain a lot. Big year for shadows, man. Bacalar should have gotten more out of that uh, when the day of the eclipse when he tweeted big big day for shadows <laughs> should have gotten a medal for that one just so I, on didn't, brand, I didn't even see that that was so, great. oh this big day for shadows <laughs> it's like you're tweeting about crying or something uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I back, big day 
and I know I that, that he's so like much. out there enjoying it. He does oh, enjoy yeah, it, but it's the so brand. Great. Yeah. God, so funny. Uh, Chris Pratt <laughs> says, does anyone know Switch 2 will have the Mario game in it? Man, I love stomping <laughs> for Lupas in that game back in the arcades. Please look into it, Jeff. I'll do what I can for you, Chris Son. Uh, anytime. Mm. Don't worry. I'm going to make sure you can get, you get your Falupa on. I think Chris, either there's a glitch here or Chris Pratt uh, said that Chris same Pratt exact did one say, twice. did say well, at the time that they accidentally sent it in twice. Well, you know, Chris Son having a little trouble with the computer there. He's a boomer. We can, yeah, exactly. We, we understand. We could just better, you're an OG gamer, Chris Pratt, Chris Son. We get it. Team Money OG says, uh, first Super Chat here, thank you so much. Don't forget to unlock your very own Jim Ryan commemorative bobblehead in PlayStation <laughs> Stars uh, before it goes away in a few days. Thanks for all you guys do. That's real, isn't it? That's that's real, although... Cool. You have if, to get one. I know, but if you pointed a gun at my head and said, go claim something in PlayStation Stars, I wouldn't even fucking know where to begin. I don't know. What is PlayStation? It's like their loyalty program. A typo. For, I thought that was a typo for the PlayStation Store. No, What's it, PlayStation Stars? It's like a program where it's like you can earn points by like spending money on PlayStation stuff in the PlayStation Store, and then you can redeem those points for Jim Ryan digital bobbleheads. <laughs> what the fuck? I, saying it out loud makes me feel crazy. I, I, like, I don't know. I don't know how to get the PlayStation Stars anyhow, so I'm not, I shouldn't uh, be answering this question. It's like content to me. Yeah. I'm trying to get the Jim Ryan bobblehead. All right, game us mornings tomorrow. Willow Davis says, "Can I see what a goatee Mike Pog face looks like?" Okay, with the disclaimer that the guy who did that face was is problematic and has been for a while, right? I think so. Uh, I can't. I definitely. He was, was, e was an esports. He was an esports. He was a fighting yeah. game guy. He, he oh, was yeah. an anti vaxxer yeah. and stuff. We don't. He we don't like Gutex anymore. Yeah, yeah. actually, <laughs> I hung out with him once. Too. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Can you do it without the mic uh, there, so we can get a clean one? <laughs> it's actually really good. Oh, that's perfect. Holy that's shit, so that was good. okay. We got it. That's good. That's Mike. Congrats. That will be an email on giantbomb.com. Okay, Absolutely. good to know. Good to know. Uh, next one here is from Big Fresh 37. Uh, arcade hockey game Goons Legends of Mayhem came out today. Play it after you finish Captain Toad. There you go. More hockey for you, hockey freaks. Good, let's go. I'll look into this. That sounds fun. Goons, Legends, and Mayhem. All right, I'm, I'm checking it out. Chris Pratt is back, says, rest in peace, OJ. You would have been a cool charging Chuck. Oh, that's true, because he's playing. Because <laughs> he, he, a... he was a football player. <laughs> yeah, I get football it. Player, Sometimes yes. I forget he was a football player. Sure, like, that's yeah. the guy who killed yeah, people. Yeah. I, I, I like the tweet today. It's like, yeah, sure, he, he, he killed that lady, but he's the only player to run for 2,000 yards in a 14-season game, and that's what's important. Incredible. <laughs> we can't say that now. We won't get sued. He's dead. I mean, he's, mm. he can't sue us That's anymore. right. He better not be able to sue me. Uh, well, he is civilly liable. Uh, the other wolf says, how do you all get comfortable playing games handheld? I feel like I spend more time adjusting my position than actually playing the games. I've always been pretty good with this. I don't know. I've been, I don't even like have to get like a, a case or special handles for my Switch like other people. I just sit there in bed or lay there in bed holding the thing. I'm fine. I live my life horizontal, baby. So I just yeah. lay down on the beanbag and go to town. There you um, go. Yeah, I actually have more uh difficulty getting comfortable with uh gaming at the desk and at the computer um mm. or at the, at, the, at the on the couch for console gaming so laying down with a handheld device has always been more comfortable for me and then big fresh 37 says honestly do game journalists all kind of hate each other like wrestlers no in fact jeff points is all the time like Twitter is Twitter, and it's weird sometimes. As whenever we see people per pe person, it's always fine. And Everything's like, great. Here's a peek behind the scene. Uh, yesterday, when all that was happening, I also that they reached out to me. Both Cat and and Jason Troy are going to be on the Giant Palm Couch this this year. Don't worry. It as soon as we get in person, it's like all that stuff. It feels so small. And then really, once we start talking in any way, it's like oh yeah, this is just. Everyone's just doing their job. Uh, and I, I think w when it seems kind of uh, acrimonious, it's when we just like let those misunderstandings like take the forefront. That's all. Got one more here. This came in from Dustin Cox. This is, hey, guys, I'm having my first kid in five months. Any advice on finding time for gaming as a parent? I'm planning to buy a Steam Deck to help. Um, okay, the question is gaming as a parent. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, Steam Deck is going to be very helpful. I got my Switch right when I started, had my first kid. Um, I mean, if it's if it's first kid, you're going to have a ton of gaming time because the thing just sits there. 
The kid just is just going to be a ball of goo, and you just got to like plop it down on the chest, make fun faces at it, and then you get to play your games. And the kids gonna be like, "Oh, what are you doing there?" Um, so it's it's pretty easy there for the first couple of months. It gets more complicated later on if you have multiple kids or once they have responsibilities uh, and they need to be like taken care of constantly, and they can't just like just shove a bottle in their face. Um, so yeah, just get a handheld device that you're comfortable with. If the Steam Deck is it, that'll be great. And uh, and that should be enough, I think. JD Camp says, "What happened to Mike? I hate change." Yeah, Mike's gone. Dark Mitch is here now. Yeah, Dark Mitch is. Uh, look, Dark Mitch has been so important to me. Saved me so many times. I decided to replace him. Uh, replace Mike with him on the show. I can do is really weird Mitch things. Or with Mike. Evil Mitch. Dark Mitch. You can be Where Dark Mitch being evil. Eh, no, it's implied. <laughs> I can do weird things with my jowl with, with, when this is like this. <laughs> Oh. Uh, Mike, don't oh. give that away for free. People yeah. should pay you tip for that, everybody. <laughs> if you want ones. Mike to do weird things with his jowl to you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Stop it. Now you're looking like the guy from Men in Black. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Sugar water. Sugar water. Sugar water. <laughs> uh, that's it for now. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to take another break, and then when we get back, we got some big topics to take care of, including our 90s arcade draft. Look out for that right after I'm this. ready to lose! All right. All right, I'll, you get set up. Yep, getting set up. You know what that reference is from, isn't it? The evil, when you have a goatee. When you, that's like yeah, it's Star reference. Trek, I know. No. I love Star Trek. No, it's a community reference. No. <laughs> no. Fuck out of here. Come I'll, on. I'll cut you. Guess we're committed. From. <laughs> You're killing independent Mikey. <laughs> I'm kidding. He does. Okay. Let's see. I'm a major Mitch. He was barely a cat at 11 11. Fucking loser. Yo, what's good, chat? Can't believe you guys told me to shoot that yellow thing, and then I did, and then it exploded. That hurt my feelings. <laughs> Jeff, I lo I intentionally looked at that thing. It said, oh, this is a bomb, and will explode. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so yeah, let's just move on with our lives. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, Jess, tell me, shoot this thing. Hell yeah, yeah. I, like, I, like, I walked, I like left it a bunch of times. I'm like, you know what? No, I'm going to go back and get the goodies. These, co these cowards were too afraid to get. Um, did not, did oh, not I work got out. you good with that one. Mm, yeah, oh, I got yeah, you it was good. very funny. Damn it. No, yeah, I, I got I got the mech. If you want ever want to use it, I can lend it to you. Uh, yeah, I would like that. Yeah. Although I should just Let keep playing. And now you, yeah. you will keep playing that game. I know for a fact that I want I want to touch that game ever again. It's just every time I like well, here's here's what happens. I get done putting the kids to bed, and then I'm like, okay, time to go back downstairs. Oh my god, I'm so tired, and then I can't do anything other than just lay there. Listen, Maybe play the crew Steam Deck. Running every night, hell divers. They always need a more soldiers. Oh yeah, it doesn't work on Steam Deck, does it? It does work on Steam Deck. I just oh, feel it does. yeah, it's it. You can get it running on Steam Deck uh, well enough. It's just um, I don't know. I I feel like uh, that would that would be like if had I played enough to be f super comfortable with the game. Uh, so that I don't feel like, oh, I wish I had my headset and everything so I could communicate better and all that stuff. I don't know. I should just get over I just that. assumed it wouldn't because oh, we don't care about that. The anti-cheat does work. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Good on Sony. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty cool that they did that. Um, okay, am I ready for this console draft? This this one, how many should we do? Should we do five? Or should we do more yeah, for a 90s how many console do draft? You usually do? Oh, yeah, you usually when do it's more. The two that. of us, we do more. But I'm like, I don't know how well. I'm gonna say yeah, I feel like you should do five. I'm going to do seven. Because uh, oh, I want to go Bob, a little bit deeper. Seven. We're going we're gonna to do the fantasy correct recap. We're doing it at the end of the show to make sure that things are very, uh, properly paced. Because these guys can't control themselves. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you say that like it's a... It's like an insult. It's like, it's just a fact. It's just, true. <laughs> it's just a fact. I never claimed right. it was an insult. <laughs> did, you, did you set up OBS while I was gone? Or were you just chatting with these fuckers? It's, it, listen, it's like most of the way there. <laughs> uh, you're correct i just gotta turn actually i just gotta turn on the source and then we're good oh i was gonna say uh nikki perfectly uh cut the clip for social <laughs> at the end i just say you shot the bomb <laughs> <laughs> oh shit cool that right. went to social wonderful yeah oh, i gotta put that on tiktok if they didn't all right all right the robots were communist mm -hmm. Boom, 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 
I was kind of, I was kind of disappointed they brought, they brought back the the bots. I wanted them to to go like at least like four days without the bots. They just I, it bring was it like, the next day. Yeah, it was the next day, right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I didn't realize how sort of living world that game is. It's yeah, oh, it's interesting. Cool. I saw it was fucking game. Yeah, uh, it's neat. Mm. I I went back to Destiny. It's pretty good. Pretty good. It's <laughs> pretty good. It's you always think it's good. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, no, next month he'll he'll say it's the worst thing in the world. Don't you worry. I never said that. You fucking <laughs> yeah, <I> agree. <laughs> pieces of shit. I never said that. <laughs> in my, I ever said that. It's like it's just like people is too loud, bro. All it's right. Like, it's a bad battle pass sometimes. What are you gonna do? I think that we are good. Um, let me just do one last thing. You know what? Figure out who goes first. Yes. DLC. That shit sucks. Don't get me started on that shit. Oh my god. Do you know that the only if you don't buy every DLC character, they don't let you use the replay function? That, that the has game? to be that has to be an oversight. No, no, that, no. That can't be right. No, it, it's by design. They don't if you don't own like the DLC character, they don't let you no, use it. No, I the know. It just feels so weird. I don't know. No, it's, it doesn't feel... It feels very... They, this motherfucker are the same people that charge you for frame data. I think that's on every fighting games. But they're like, better about What are you talking them. about? I have faith. Chris did it on purpose. Now, if we found out that it is on purpose, then yeah, fuck them. It is on purpose. <laughs> and all faith is gone. Yeah. First of all, we're never going to find out because now they're going to say, oh... Well, either they change it or they don't. That's how we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out the hard. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. And uh, for everyone, oh, chat. Yeah. No, no, no tips, please. Our ability to remember what games are from the '90s or not is important on this. That's yeah, true. We'll no no hard feelings, but I'm again. gonna delete this message real quick. Okay. Um, but a little while. We don't shoot you forever. I think that I am ready. Okay. We we'll, we'll bring you back from death. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. We can bring us back in. In fact, we me. Yeah, you know I'll ring you back. Let's I mean, go. okay. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out live. All right, we're back, and it's the '90s. Uh, I'm, we're back when love was still left in the world. We did it. Yeah, yeah. Back when O.J. Simpson was in his prime. <laughs> in his prime, and 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 Bill Clinton was president, and everything. There was no. No penises in anyone's mouth. I'm sorry. I don't know why what? that's where I went. What? What? I just can't think about the 90s what? without thinking about Bill Clinton's penis. How about you? Oh, okay. Yes, right. You could think about... Yep. You're right. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. All right. Uh, we're we're going to pick our... Well, okay. Here's a couple of things. So we're going to do a 90s arcade draft. We need to figure out a couple of things. I was thinking maybe like seven games, Mike. Uh, but what do you think? I probably like to get the 10. We get the seven first and see if we... If we like really are running on fumes trying to come up with these anymore, but All right. sounds good. Uh, and then uh, we got to figure out who's going first. Um, yep. Do we have a solution for that? I can like roll a dice or something. Unless uh, Sean, do you have something? All right, did Mike goes first. Hey, very cool. Right. All right. Uh, anything else we and need to figure out, Mike? Yeah, like look, some games have like multiple variations, oh, but yeah, I, look, uh, any game that was possible to play in the arcades in the '90s. So if something came out in the '80s but was available in the '90s, I think that's fair game. I don't think there's we're gonna pick what? many of those because it's like hard because of the various like releases. I think it's kind of uh, like I mean to a point, but like what you want to like make Pac-Man eligible? That's not really what I, I was thinking. More like you know things that have like Terminator Edition and whatnot, like. Uh, yeah, I don't think we need to get that. Okay, with yeah, it. okay, sure. I, th I think if it's like, what I mean mostly is like, if it's like 89, but like it came out in the United States in the 90s, I just don't want to be too strict on that. That's what I mean. All right, that's fine. We'll cool. have some buffer. All right, cool. All right, in that case, Mikey, you're first. Go for it. E uh, this is, it is hard. I feel like, like, what is number one here? I know what, I know what was the most popular arcade game, and it's just a matter of like, is this still going to work now? Um, even though it's all stuff from the nineties, I'll still be called a boomer no matter what I pick. But I think I'll, I think I'll pick NBA jam first, actually. Yeah. And like, yeah, again, like what I mean, like, yeah, tournament edition is like the ideal form, but you know, just right. play uh, NBA jam. That's probably fine. Um, okay. Yeah, this is, this is tough. I'm trying to think of games that will get people the most excited. Um, and it's hard to predict, I think. Um, so I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with X-Men Arcade. I like it. Gotta get one of those beat-em-ups. Yeah, I think people see that and they get, I think they get pretty excited. Just kind of like, oh yeah, I love that game. I played it so much as a kid. It's, I, I, I know, I, I think a lot of people think that like they can't get the beat-em-up license because uh, 
Sony just owns X-Men for video games right now. But God, I hope a deal can happen because with, with X-Men 97 popping off and with Tribute Games just having done that amazing like TMNT beat them up. Just please make a new X-Men beat them up in that style happen, please. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I, you I was going crazy. Feels, feels like there's usually exceptions for that sort of thing. So hopefully they can make it happen. I'm going to go Street Fighter 3 Third Strike specifically. Right. It's a, yeah. Uh, which just squeaked in there in 99. I believe I think that this is the best fighting game to come out in the 90s. Fighting games are obviously very important for video game for fighting games in the 90s. So I'm going with that one. Yeah, and I'm I'm going to go in a similar route, but I'm going to go with the one that's like, uh, uh, I think, uh, splashier for more people. And that's Mortal Kombat 2. Yeah, that's kind of the other one. That was definitely the one to me that was like more important at the time. Right. Yeah. For and, sure. I, and I think people are again like, oh, yeah, I love Mortal Kombat 2. I'm like. Not sure how far that gets me, but I, I'm hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> Chat, no suggestions. <laughs> how many? I see all life. these deleted things. Chat, no, no suggestions. Cole, except for you, Colt. I'll read yours. Don't worry. No. Hey, Colt, how's it going? <laughs> but, but thank you for being so engaged. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna also do a beat 'em up. Um, there's one I know I like more. I bet you can guess too, Jeff. I think I gotta go with the more popular ones there. I gotta go with TMNT Turtles in Time. Okay. As my representative here. Um, I think in that case, I I will go with uh, because I I'm gonna go. For, I'm just gonna kind of go with the theme of like I think people will get excited when they see this. I'm gonna go with The Simpsons. Then I know it's another beat 'em okay. up. But I think there's people who like X-Men. I think there's people who like The Simpsons. And I'll know. this will cover both of those bases. So I think now I'm worried about the racing genre. And for me, that's going to be Daytona USA is yeah, my go-to. Right? Daytona. Yeah, that's really good. Man, I'm like, every time you like pick one, I'm like, oh, should I be immediately thinking about covering that genre? Um, and I might, but, well, maybe not exactly a racing game, though. You know what? I I'll go with Crazy Taxi. Okay. I like hey, that. I love Crazy Taxi. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Crazy Taxi has never been one where I'm like, I'm gaga for it, but I always have fun. And I know people have uh, fond memories of it as an arcade game. The other genre I really want to cover here is uh, the, the gun uh, genre shooting. And for this, I, I think the best one is absolutely Time Crisis 2. That's the um, one I would always think of for these kinds of games specifically. All right. And, and go, go, just going second is kind of forcing me in these situations. And I want to make sure that I have something to answer that, that I feel comfortable with. And so I'll go with the house of the dead. Okay. It's the house of the dead. Da, 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 da. I like that. That's, that's good. That makes sense to me. Yeah. But I'm like, I look at your list. I think it's a, your list is the one I like better already. So they're, they're, they're both good. Yeah. They're, they're both good, but like this is how it always goes. Isn't it? Um, yep. Your turn, Mikey. Um, we, we, we can clearly go to 10. I think so. Yeah, we're doing pretty good here. Uh, because, yeah, this would be six. Uh, I think another kind of co-op game, but of a different style. I'm going to go with Gauntlet Legends now. Wow. that's I feel, I feel like that's what I love. Uh, do you think it's going to play? Like, I think you, Gauntlet Legends still plays. Good. A bit. I'm glad yeah. to hear that. I, I, honestly, I think that's it a relief. I love Gauntlet Legends. Yes. Um, I'm glad I'm great. And Sean Santa strong. I'm glad to hear that. Cause I was like, man, that's one I always think of as a great pick, but I wasn't, I didn't have confidence in it. Um, man, is that, should I go with that arcade version of that one? I don't know. Maybe not. Um, how many more fighting games do I really want to go with? You know what? I don't have my answer to that. I'll go with NFL blitz. Yeah, that's good. I probably should have picked that one up by now. Yeah, and I should have done it earlier, I think. Um, but I'm I'm happy with that that pick. I mean, come on. If it's not NBA Jam, it's NFL Blitz for a lot of people. And a lot of people prefer NFL Blitz. So I feel good about yeah. that. Uh gosh, this is important to me. And this was one that was everywhere. And I think people I think people still liked it. It was <laughs> this I hope it's not a boomer pick, but Star Wars trilogy. Oh, you bastard. That arcade machine rule. Yes, that does. was great. Yep, absolutely. Um Okay, I'm thinking here. Um, I got now. I'm, now I am kind of leaning back towards a fighting game. I think. Uh, I'm gonna go with Soul Calibur. Okay. I think I'm gonna go right back at you. 
uh, yeah, I think I'll just go with Tekken 3 then. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a good one. Um, all right, so where are we at? We, that means this is our eighth pick. Yes, yes, this is your eighth. This is my eighth. Um, hey, Uwu Gamer, thank you so much for 10 gifted. Uh, oh, thank you, Uwu Gamer. Memberships. Thank you, Uwu Gamer. That's great. Really thank you so much. Pickle Giraffe got one. <laughs> yeah, that. so everyone in chat that's getting one right now, be sure to thank Uwu Gamer. Shout out to the Uwu Gamer, uh, which is a fantastic yeah. name. Um, okay. Man, you got Time Crisis. That's a good one. Um, huh. Yeah, it's like I'm trying putting myself into arcades and like trying to walk through. Yeah, and I'm like I'm like trying to make sure I'm not like missing any obvious greats that uh, I'll kick myself. Um, but I'm like I can't keep. I'm not gonna pick another fighting game. That's just I don't feel like that's not gonna help me anymore. You know what? I'm gonna go with uh, San Francisco Rush. Nice. It's good. I'm gonna go with Metal Slug. That's one that was definitely my thinking SNK of. I was kind of wondering if I could get away with that as a last pick. Uh, no, yes, I'm too smart. Right, and, and SNK, I was like thinking about SNK as well. I'm like, I think that's the SNK game I would still want. Um, uh, okay, let's see here. You know what? I I will go with um, Die Hard Arcade. Okay. Okay. Uh, God, this is like a big one. I part of me wonder how's it, how it plays now. This is my last one, but I think I'm gonna go with Hydro Thunder. Hydro Thunder is fantastic. That is a really good game. It's, it's good definitely one. I it's when I when I took a uh, Crazy Taxi, I was thinking maybe I should go with Hydro Thunder instead. But I'm like Crazy Taxi just has that brand recognition that I couldn't deny. Um, okay, I'm gonna go with Dance Dance Revolution then for my last one. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, I definitely should have got something from the music genre. Yeah. Um. Like you know, look, there's a couple other ones that would be in the in play there, but I think Dance Dance Revolution is is correct. Um, oh, all right, each. Mike, why don't you read yours and then I'll read mine for audio listeners. Yeah, for the Mikey's Arcade uh, has NBA Jam, Street Fighter Three, Third Strike, Team and T Turtles of Time, Daytona USA, Time Crisis Two, Gauntlet Legends, Star Wars Trilogy Arcade, Tekken Three, Metal Slug, and Hydro Thunder. Uh. Hey, Jess Gordon just gifted Ted's. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, game Jez. Message. Thank you, Jez. Oh my gosh, everyone. Thank you so much. Apparently, Jez is the uwu gamer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thank you, Jez. That's 20 then from Jez. Thank, Thank you, Jez. So much. The uwu gamer, Gordon, uh, for 20 gifted subs. Uh, the Jeff Cade has X Men Arcade, Mortal Kombat 2, The Simpsons, Crazy Taxi, The House of the Dead, NFL Blitz, Soul Calibur, San Francisco Rush. Die Hard Arcade, Dance Dance Revolution. I should have done Revolution X. Another incredibly nice. I, I, I thought about arcade. that one. I thought about Area 51. Uh, oh, a bunch God. of those shooters. Site 4. Yeah. Carnival. Remember Carnival? that? Carnival, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Chat, you can, if we miss anything, ja, uh, no chat, you can yell at us. What? No pinballs on your arcade? No, ah, since like really we're doing 90s arcade, of. it's kind of what, yeah. Different. Also, right. also Although, fuck Jeff Bacalar. The episode one arcade machine with like the hologram screen that was a pretty cool. That was. Uh, yeah, I should have put Top Golf and Big Buck Hunter. <laughs> of course, <laughs> uh, Gee, don't, yeah, I was trying to think oh, about a shmup game, and I just like wasn't really sure what's what the, to put on there. It, yeah, Top Top Golf. That's the one you said. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that would have been. I don't. I'm not sure if I even knew Power Stone was an arcade game. First monster. <laughs> no ski ball. Yeah. What if I just said ski ball? Did you see that video of Mary Kish? Yes. Uh, Hitting, insane. It's the one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Like I've gotten two in a row before and felt like a god, and she hit yeah. every single one in the one hundred. I've, and I've never ball. felt like such a beta in my life. Yes, I, absolutely. I'm like she just cupped me with a ski ball machine. That's yeah. crazy. All right, um, I'm gonna post this to, tw uh, to oh, Twitter. Oh, Neo Turf Masters would have been good. I, I did think it. about Neo Turf Masters yeah. when you took Metal Slug, but I'm like, I, that might be kind of a, a yeah. and Marvel game. Capcom too. By the way, is like early two thousands drag. <laughs> Like early two thousands, I think it's literally two thousands, like February um, two thousand or something like that. Yeah, Cole, that was Mary Cash. That was it's just impressive stuff. So, do you want to take a break while we maybe start the poll and tally eight? Uh, take then, a break. Yeah, then uh, Christian, you said well, yes to, to a break. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll yeah I'll right that. Now. I want to talk about some games we've been playing. There's something interesting that I played, and then yes. how about uh, we do a well, break, do the next segment, and then I'll get to the results after that. Yeah, cool. and then the end, end of the show, we're going to do um, 
uh, the recap of the fantasy league, I believe. Right. But let, let's do that first, and then that gives people time to vote. Cool. Thanks. Let's. Well, okay, we'll talk about. It you know what? We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. All right, now talk about it. <laughs> we but, should do the fantasy thing as like the last thing. Yeah, let's do this. We, this it's the last thing. We should do fantasy thing first because then that gives people time to vote in that, and then well, we yeah, but we can talk about our games that, that we've been playing. Okay. Yeah. And I just think fantasy should be last. I think that's kind of insider baseball for anybody who's not involved with that. So R- right, for the, right. there's a lot of the audience that, that, that doesn't participate in that stuff. Um, All right. Okay. Let's see here. What am I doing? Okay. Yep. There it is. Let me make Going a poll. The Sunset right. Riders. I should have, should have done the Moo Cow the the Moo Cowboys of Moo Mesa or whatever. The real Cowboys of Moo Mesa, whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah. You in Argentina, you wouldn't win with any of this list because there's no FIFA game. No, is, no. is, is there a FIFA arcade game? I guess there, of course, there is. I, I don't know if for FIFA is just football arcades for sure. Sure, okay. Uh, all right. Oh, that's the wrong thing. There was Sega arcade, Virtua, Virtua oh, Soccer. Point blank would have been good. Point blank would have been good. Point Blank is a lot of fun, but I it just doesn't. I feel like most people don't know about Point Blank. Yeah, but they should. They should. It's messed up. Also, Kino Fighter for sure. Yeah, Kino I thought about like maybe, but I don't know. No, for Argentina, I mean. Oh, Argentina, big in the King of Fighters scene. Ooh, you had no idea. That's that's a Latin America Kino Fighter. Mexico yeah. is kind of the one of the biggest Kino Fighters countries. Okay, uh, the poll is going right now, and uh, I gotta say, I I think I would I would vote for Mike because I think it's really good. <laughs> I did it. Let's it's see. Real good. I'm feeling good about this I, one. I, I yes, it's really good. Pretty good. Um, okay, let's see okay, here. Let's talk about Beach games. What you've been playing, and then we do the. Cool. The results. Uh, yes. Sounds results. good. Results. All right. Yep. Let's go. And we're back. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, I thought we were back already. I was real confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. No, that's, that, that's just in the show now. That's going to okay, be the fine. podcast version right Welcome there. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to our show where we're going to talk about video games. Mike, what have you been playing? I guess it's something interesting. Well, I got to play actually a bit of the Rogue Prince of Persia, which is the recently announced uh, roguelike Prince of Persia game being made by uh, e- Evil Empire, I believe is the name of the Dead Cells studio. That's right. This is coming out in early access uh, later this year. I think sometime in the summer. I can never find that date when I think about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I got to play like about an hour of this. I got to do a few runs. I think it's coming uh, May 15th, by the way. May 15th in so, early access. So next month. Steam only. Yep. Okay. Pretty soon then. So... Yeah, it's it's so it is weird, Jeff. It's weird in the ways I think we thought it'd be weird. Like, okay, there's just another new 2D uh Prince of Persia game after we already got one that was amazing. And it's obviously similar because it's 2D and it's about combat and platforming, but it is like, yes, yeah, it's just made from different people. It's like these two co- teams were not talking to each other. They aren't connected in any narrative sense or anything like that. And yet everything here still feels really good. Like that combat, that 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 definitely is a bit Dead Cells. And Dead Cells was very good with the 2D combat. Right. And unlike with the, you know, uh, Lost Crown, you are getting different weapons and stuff as part of your build and whatnot. Then the platforming also feels really good. But the big thing here is that wall climbing mechanic. Whereas in the Lost Crown, you had that kind of wall climb air dash, basically. Right. And that was the way they incorporated it here. A lot of times there is literally a wall in the background. And if there is one then you can do a short climb on it in any direction to kind of help your movement. And that feels fantastic. That sounds fantastic. So, wait, so you're saying you could run uh, wall run in any direction. Yeah. You can like wall run up if you oh, want okay. to and like diagonal. So it's like, that's going to be diagonal. awesome for platforming. Yeah, exactly. Like that's like kind of the main platforming hook of it. And th- th- now not, there's not always a background there, but like 95% of the time there is. Okay, so my question is, um, this is a procedurally generated game because it's a roguelike game similar to Dead Cells. Does the platforming feel like considered enough that it like re- re- um, reaches your standards as someone who's super into that kind of game? Yeah, it does. And there are like, like part of what you will find are platforming challenge rooms which do have like the really well crafted sure. okay, platforming that makes segments. Okay. And then like you do it and there's a chest with like one of three upgrades kind of a thing. Right. 
So even in like the levels itself, it feels good. But then when you have those, it is kind of like, okay, now I'm like really moving and this is feeling really nice. Kind of like, again, how it feels in some of those sections in the Lost Crown, even though the mechanics are a bit different here. Um, and then uh, the the look of it, uh, how, how are you feeling about that? I mean, it looks uh, like slightly rotoscoped, uh, has uh, echoes of a bunch of different things, but I, I know you brought up the original Prince of Persia, the uh, cinematic platformer. Uh, does that come across when you're playing it? Because in the video, I'm like, this looks pretty good, but I bet it'll look better when I'm playing it. Does does it does that feel yeah, that way? I mean, I, th I, I can see how it might throw some people off, right? It is, it is striking. It is that kind of unshaded style. That like um, I, I think now, now I'm thinking of Dan Reichert and like Hollow Knight. I think some people associate that as new groundsy a little bit and maybe consider it as sort of cheap looking. I think it looks nice and it does have that like like there's a lot of frames that looks real rotos rotoscopy. Right. I mean I, I I've been saying it kind of reminds me of like the original Prince of Persia. Did you kind of get what I meant by that? Now that you see it, yeah. When I look at it, I, I see what you mean. It, it, it reminds me of games that were sort of um, doing that rotoscope style from later as well. The one I brought up on Game Mess Mornings, which I didn't show. I showed the Revenge of the Sith one for the DS, but Attack of the Clones for Game Boy Advance has that rotoscoping as well. And it reminds mm. me a lot of that. Um, but obviously that is informed by Prince of Persia as well. Um, I, I don't know. I think it looks really striking. I think like the, uh, beyond like the technical look, the, um, uh, the, the, the style choices and the, like the setting, that stuff really stuck out as well. I'm like, man, we've had a lot of Prince of Persia games and yet how somehow this still feels pretty fresh. Yeah, that's what's neat. It is neat how distinct this still feels from the literal Prince of Persia game we got a couple months ago, right? Um, you know, and that was doing like, you know, polygons as a 2D kind of thing. And this is doing much more of a drawled art, or art kind of painterly style, I suppose. Maybe not painterly, but you know what I mean. It's clearly different than that. And they both look good. Uh, but yeah, I just was surprised that it, it does play well, even though it feels different. The runs were feeling good. Like I was fighting a boss at the end and I would get very close to killing him and then I get mad at myself. That I didn't. I think just like Lost Crown, you have like a potion system, right? Where you have like, oh, you have so many potions and you know you can use them. Maybe you can refill them here or there. Who knows? So uh, I think that this is going to hit pretty well when this comes out. Good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Um, I've mostly been playing games I can't talk about. I'll be able to talk about them here pretty soon. Um, some stuff I'm excited about. Uh, we did check back in on Helldivers 2 today, uh, and yeah, that game, game continues to be very fun. Every time we play it, we just have a good time. I'm not playing enough of it. I wish I was playing more of it. Um, but, boy, it's just a great time to jump in there, do fun stuff, um, and every moment is exciting or funny. And, that like, not every game has that. So, really, really enjoyed ourselves there. Um I am, I'm still pretty low level, so I'm using a lot of the basic stuff still, and yet it's like, you know, figuring out how to make the, uh, I can't remember the name of the gun, but it's the one that's the big cannon that I put on my shoulder and has a backpack of ammo, and realizing that... The recoilless rifle. Thank you, the recoilless rifle, realizing that Sean could take the backpack and carry it for me, and when it was time for me to fire it, he could be reloading it while I'm firing it, so it's ready to go way faster than me wow. stopping, sitting down on my knee, putting the thing in, and being completely helpless. And like, he was like, I'm going to wear this backpack. How does it work? And he just came up to me. He had a new option like that. That's really neat. Like that teamwork is like, OK, the synergies are obvious here. And and, and, and that also has it's like uh, give and take. It's like, OK, we can fire this very powerful rifle now much more quickly. But now Sean can't wear anything on his backpack other than my ammo. So there's a give and take there. And I just like thinking about right. those various synergies. And I'm like, I'm also glad we're not um, super serious about the game. Like we're like, we are going to play the meta. We are going to like do the thing. We're going to get the weapon that sure. is the best weapon. It's like, no, we're just having fun, experimenting, figuring things out. And I think that's probably where the game is at its best, where it's like, oh, we're discovering these new ways of working together. And that felt really cool. So, yeah, big fan of it. Also, we made uh, Christian mad the entire time because we weren't yeah, playing. Sure. Well, that, that alone made it worth it. Exactly. Yeah. All yeah. Right. yeah. Anything I'm, else from I'm you, Mike? Glad... Christian, Christian? You could, right. Christian, go ahead. No, I was saying, I'm, I'm glad my, my, my suffering brings you joy. So. <laughs> You're right. You're Absolutely. Uh, but so the worst thing you can do is, is decide you want to talk and, and scream out two syllables and then I'm go sorry. quiet. I'm in Argentina, <laughs> motherfucker. It's a, like a whole second delay for me to talk. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, I, I'm I forgive again. you. Uh, we, got, uh, we got to put the mods back in the mod hole at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you said it. Uh, uh, anything I else, beat Mike? Persona 3 Reload, finally. I did finally get through it. I kind of had, like, that big, like, I, I, something magical about, like, deciding to play, uh, to finish the JRPG that you're playing. 
and you do that in like four hours or so, right? Because like, you know, we're, you know, you know, you're at the end. You're not going to leave some of that for the next day. So I had uh, a big race there to kind of get through it. I was very powerful by the end. I don't know what I did, but like it, it was pretty, pretty easy at the end there for me. I was just completely wiping through these final bosses and everything. But man, it still hits. Um, you know, no spoilers, but Persona 3 has a very uh, a good ending. It's an ending that really sticks with you. I, it was just really neat because when I played Persona 3 Portable, I was doing that on my Vita. I was like, that's so long ago. I was like, you know, living in the basement of my mother's condo at that time. Right. So all these years later, just like, you know, situations change. I'm in my own house uh, playing this thing on the ROG ally now being in a much like like better place in life. Uh, but like still having that kind of similar experience. There's something uh, really neat about that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you're able to get through all that, too, especially in like a busy year already. Uh, taking that much time on something like that and able to being able to get through that's great uh are you like what is your plan to attack the games that you've missed so far this year because i'm for me well, i'm like starting to be like maybe maybe i don't have to go back and play everything i mean i want to start unicorn overlord and i was going to then i like was like organizing my nso stuff and it's funny, like i've not played my switch very much the last like, right. couple months because i've been doing persona it's like oh holding my switch and then Somehow I just found myself playing Mario Golf on yeah. the Game Boy Color. And like okay, I played like two hours of that uh -huh. last night. And I I think I'm probably gonna play more of that tonight, uh, before we really dive into Unicorn Overlord. I yeah, don't know. I did start Unicorn Overlord, but I do have Mario Golf just sitting on the analog pocket and uh a bunch of nights where I'm like, okay, I gotta track let me go get the Steam Deck. And I'm like, ah, oh, the analog pocket's right there. I'll just start playing some Mario Golf instead and doing that instead. Um, Unicorn Overlord. I talked about that on, on Nintendogs, everybody. If you want to listen to it there. That game is is very good, though. I'm I'm very into the, 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 the tactics, and I am skipping a lot of the story, and that is making it pretty bearable for me. So, yeah. Christian, Christian brings up an interesting point. Are you done with Dragon's Dogma? I don't, I'm not, I want to go back to it, but it's like, I it, like it's in the same spot with like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I want to go back to that. And I'm like, I think what I need to do is acknowledge I'm not going to go back to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, at least yeah, not right now, and just go play Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, and, but God, I wish it just ran better on, on the Steam Deck or something. It so. should ran better on everything. It should run better on everything. So sure. yeah. Uh, anything else, Mike? No, I think I'm ready to be declared a winner, hopefully. All right. Somehow well, I won't. Uh, let's, Somehow yeah, I won't. let's do the results right now uh, for that. I'm going to end the poll and give Sean a second to collate that and give us the results. Oh, um, one, one more time, though. Mikey, uh -huh. Mikey's Arcade versus Jeff Cade. Uh, are the highlights here, NBA Jam versus X-Men Arcade, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike versus Mortal Kombat 2. We'll see what people pick. Sean, do we have the results? We do. We have the official results, as always, with these drafts. Correct. The, uh, the patrons of the community over in the Discord ultimately decide who is the winner of the evening. That's right. And uh, I would like to say, I think you both made some good lists tonight. I think Mike was a little Thank stronger you. in the first half. Jeff was a little stronger in the second half. Both good lists. And I will say the polls on all platforms are relatively close. But yes. okay. interestingly... The podcast producers did favor one of these a bit more because with 60% of the vote, so not a blowout, but definitely in the lead, your winner is Mikey's Arcade. Okay. Oh, my God. I was like, it's somehow it's not going to win. Because <laughs> I just went on Twitter and saw that somehow I'm losing there. And I was like, what? No way. I, I, I went oh. for the Twitter audience and it fucked me. That's what I mean. <laughs> never, don't go for those sickos. You can't ever go for those sickos. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised, Mike. I, I really would have a better time in your arcade than my own. <laughs> of course, I have Hydro Thunder. Yeah, you have Hydro. Obviously, Hydro Thunder fucking rules. Yeah, um, yeah, Star good. Wars Trilogy Arcade, Gauntlet Legends. I love these games. I, I felt good about. I think Gauntlet Legends was a good pool for me. I'm, I'm glad you. I'm glad you picked it, and you deserve to win for having the the uh, bravery to pick that one. Because I was too much of a coward, so uh, that puts me in my place. Uh, Daytona USA these are all really great games i'm like i would miss x-men arcade if i didn't have that and stuff like I would that miss x-men arcade but, but i think and mortal you, kombat 2 the most sure. like you're, like you plants. honestly your games i think are better and mine have some like uh, what i did there was like oh i'll just try to get by on name recognition and that wasn't enough this time so yeah yeah i definitely wish i got blitz i think blitz was a big get for you yeah blitz especially that late yes blitz especially was that a, late but blitz was a good a value pick at that place i was like, able to get a lot of value at that point in the draft so Felt good about that. I also felt good about Dance Dance Revolution, honestly. Yeah, well. that's a good one. 
Uh, all right, that's going to do it for that. I think we have one last section here. We need to catch up on what's going on with the uh, Fantasy Critic League. Is, is, and we have like a full rundown of that, right, Sean? We do, which I will need one more break to set up for. Sounds good. We'll all right, right we'll be back right after this. All right, and like like Mike said, this is like inside baseball stuff, so, you know. Yeah, we don't, we don't yeah that's fair. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, yeah. 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 So... Oh. Uh, do you, yeah. uh, you're going to be sending something to me, I'm assuming. But if yeah, you send I a super chat in, we'll still uh, read those at the very end, everybody. So. Yep, exactly. Stay right. yep, yep, Presenter yep, yep, yep. mode. Yep. Following yep, yep. the release of Destiny 2 so into the like update, the games player the count is on Steam double We just got to let him go. Once he gets started, you have to just let him go. Oh my God. Yeah, you're right. Glad you're having fun. Mm. Yeah, fun, I guess. That's <laughs> fun, I yeah, guess. Fun, I, I love guess. when Jeff, when you said that about that fucking Joker thing, <laughs> that was so good. I just like. Um, these people are like, oh my god, they drew a smiley face on the window. Can you believe it? I'm jizzing in Absolute my pants art. right now. Yeah. I'm a, you motherfucking weirdo. I don't think I'm gonna be able to handle it. The first one. I can't believe they gave an Oscar to that movie. Crazy to me. Yeah, yeah Oscar winning like, movie. I try not, I try to, I don't want to be, look, I joke about movies being mid. I don't really want to be that cynical, but God, I just can't no. with these fucking Joker movies. Yep. I just can't. That movie is so mediocre. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, it's it okay. Good, it's okay like, if you like it. I just, it's not for me. Uh, I, I yeah, did like the, it's there was a not movie. okay with me if you like it. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a tweet today. Someone's like, these movies, it's like someone was brave enough to wonder what if a guy sucked and made a movie about <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, was, oh my God. That was great. It's totally that. What if a guy sucked? <laughs> yeah, but also, No Man's an Island, right? Like that, that's no like Man's what happens if a man is an island, I think, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 they're like, Beck and I asked, do you guys actually hate Joker? It's not hate. This is not hate. Uh, mm -hmm. It is sort hey, of shit talk. talk. Joker? It's, yeah, it's shit talk. It's like. um. I did watch it. I was not like entertained and when, I was not moved, uh, but I didn't hate it. When did um when did Harley Quinn become like sexy? Cuz like in the animated series, oh, she was been. mostly <laughs> just I I oh, know yes. like yeah, sure for yeah, I know for some people, but like she was mostly just a goober. No, my there. No, no, always has been. I, people uh, people did sexy. think that she was pretty sexy in the cartoon right yes. away. Now, especially yes. before the transformation and knowing what's underneath the costume is half the battle. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. A battle, huh? Okay. I, <laughs> well, remember, well, I, I remember playing Arkham Asylum for the first time and seeing like her design and that. I'd be like, whoa. Oh, and mm -hmm. if, to me, it felt like oh, that, like shortly nothing. after that was when I started seeing like oh, everyone's hey, dressing up. It became up as very Quinn. popular cosplay around that time, absolutely. Right, it but it was like also popular happened, before that, and for sure. Everybody in the world had that Daddy's Francisco. Little Girl uh -huh. costume on there. Uh, DC realized a long time ago that they didn't have legs and so they started sexying up their characters in like the 2000s. That's when that all happened. I see. I Anyways. have everything up and ready to go. All right. All right. I'm ready when you guys are. All right. I'm going to bring us back in. All right, boys. Uh, I just can't wait till the Joker Begin. 2 comes out. But in the meantime, <laughs> I'll try to feel something with these fantasy critic results uh, brought to you by Turbishon, who is brought to you by Benji Bop, right? Is that how it works? Is that I am powered key? by Benji Bop. You are powered by Benji Bop. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I love that much, phrasing. <laughs> much like the uh, the voting on the draft that we did before, this is another thing that we're doing for our podcast producers, which, you know, anyone can join in if they're a supporter of the show. So, uh, patreon.com slash game or hey, if you're a YouTube member as well, which some people became tonight, you can also get in uh, over at the Discord or their Discord. That's right. You're, you're in the Gamers. Discord now, so feel free to go over there and join. That's right. So anyways, what we have here is a, uh, a recap. I, I guess we're doing uh, roughly bi-monthly or something of uh, what's going on in our uh, fantasy critic draft uh game we uh, we we like to do a variety of uh metacritic open critic prediction stuff as listeners of the show know and this is the uh the fantasy sports style game that we do with this and so here we have from benji bop who organizes all this stuff thank you very much bop as always a summary of what's been going on for the past uh, month and a half or so now just like last time jeff if you are so inclined uh, i would like your very special skill to be used on this next slide here yeah i'll do what i can Thank you, sir. Skills. All right. We are starting off. And of course, Adam Asleep has a huge lead with Nick Turbo, not far behind. But then there is a bunch of people falling behind. Whoa. Immediately, though, GameCube Chris takes a big lead 
jumps ahead, right ahead of Dr. Ryan. Nick Turbo hanging on in Bellatro third place. did that for yeah, Game Cube, Chris, big, the That was the big, big Bellatro there. move. Bellatro was the best thing to do. And then Final oh. Fantasy VII Rebirth comes out, and that keeps GameCube Chris in the lead. But then Tyler, James Bay, able to get into second place. Uh, Expeditions, a Mudrunner Games launches alongside Unicorn Overlord. And there's a little bit of movement there in the charts with Corey Williams going to the top six or seven there. But still, at number one, GameCube Chris, followed by uh, Tyler, Tyler James Bay. And number three is Dr. Ryan. Yeah, and it's still moving. There's very little movement. Very few game releases happening anymore at this point. We're getting towards the end of March, but there's Dragon's Dogma 2 and big movement there. Dr. Lynch takes the first place with the movement from Dragon's Dogma 2. GameCube Chris, not far behind. Low Rule Legend also in third place now. Uh, 47.6 points. Tyler James Bay rounding out the top four with 47.3 points. Razzle Jazzle again some there with Pepper Grinder as well. Yeah. Uh, and that's the end of March. Hey, I think your graph was, by the way, isn't cropped properly on the OBS scene. Oh, yeah. Let me fix that for you, everybody. <laughs> it's mostly there. <laughs> it might be a little low rise on the version anyway. So yeah, that's exactly. why we're going to be yeah, yeah. Excellent tag team there, boys. I really yeah, appreciate so that, that. That leaves Dr. Lynch uh, so far in the lead at 50.3 points yep. at the end of march uh now this got, could this doesn't mean everything because obviously a lot of people just maybe haven't had games come out yet yes I yes know. uh got some got some more stats for you boys here too to uh expound upon that a little bit um so noble releases of the period i won't read the scores for all of them and what it means and for everything but we have final fantasy 7 rebirth at the top and then in descending order of score uh i found out this this broke my brain apparently it is Balatro. Balatro? That, Balatro? That, that that hurt me. Yeah. Ba Balatro? Because it, it's an actual like Latin word. It's a Latin it's word, yes. Balatro. Yeah, it refers yeah. to like a like well, an actual so. goof uh, joker yeah. in like yeah. 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 yeah that just, just... Say wrong. <laughs> well, but then I realized the only people I've heard say it are basically Jan and Grub. I'm like, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Balatro, uh, Balatro, however you want to pronounce it. <laughs> Unicorn Overlord, Dragon's Dogma 2, Pacific Drive, Penny's Big Breakaway, Rise of the Ronin. Princess Peach Showtime, Alone in the Dark, and South Park Snow Day, all with varying scores from Reverse 92 on Open Critic down to South Park's 61. So what everyone picked during this period is definitely going to affect things here. Here, I'll, uh, I'll just read who's at the top of each leaderboard for each of the divisions. Game Mess Critiques, which is a uh, Bops uh league uh we u2 featuring bono nice from tyler james <laughs> Bay. fantastic name just absolutely excellent in the lead there with 47 points we have last of the critique dogs that should be mikey's league where razzle jazzled is leading with publisher tycoon 46 points closest to the messy critic that is bops league uh gamecube chris is leading there with their nintencom uh <laughs> publisher 48 points on the board Critical Jeopardy is my league where uh, Beef Hammer 11 Crown, oh, Bob, why'd you acknowledge that, is uh, leading <laughs> with the Jan Ochuchu Choa Express <laughs> and his 37 yeah. points. <laughs> uh, Critique Bros, I believe this is AJ's league uh, where Dr. Lynch is leading with Dr. Lynch's Mean Fantasy Critic Machine, parentheses, sock is good, with yeah. 50 points. And uh, that means that the top 10 overall leaderboard looks as follows. Uh, Dr. Lynch is in the lead, as Mike said, with those 50 points. GameCube Chris in second with 48 and Low Rule Legend with 47. If you want to see where else people have placed, well, let's check out the video version for yourself. Uh, the captain's leaderboard, on the other hand, here... <laughs> We have in order at the top is uh, yours truly, Turbo Sean, with my Crystal Dynamics, Crystal with a K, of course, <laughs> publisher, 25.09 points. Now, why do I have that and everyone else on the board not so much? Because I had Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in my yeah, league, right. which did very well for me. If anyone doesn't know, uh, if it's any points that a game scores over 90 on Open Critic is worth double the points in our league. Uh, so big scores there. Uh, Benji Bops, Bops Shadow Drops. Got 12.61 points uh, with a variety of smaller releases. Uh, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons remake. Uh, he got Expeditions as well and counterpicked Splatoon 3 side or DLC, which I believe got him actually negative points here if we're, I'm reading this correctly. Uh, Jeff Grubb with Stunt Race FX on those hoes gaming. Yeah, God, that's so good. Tied that's for so third good, place. Jeff. That's right. Tied what? for third place with zero points. Well, that doesn't with, matter. Uh, 
<laughs> AJ Minotti's Edge Games. But interestingly, Mike Minotti's uh, Rocket Mike Adventures is in the whole negative 6.21 points because he counterpicked Rise of the Ronin, which actually, uh, if, the ma- if my math is done right there, it means that I scored a 76 on open career. Yeah, yeah, like he I said, had to yeah. score below a 70 for him to gain points. With and look, pick. I stand by that. So you have to, you have to counterpick something and it better that than something that's going to be scoring the 80s or or whatever. Um and so my, my bigger worry is that my my one of my games like so my games right now are uh, Star Wars Atlas, uh, Visions of Mana and then unannounced mainline 3D Mario platformers. That's my real problem is I don't think that's coming out anymore. So I have a lot of spots I need to fill up in this thing pretty soon. Here. And, and you're right. Like I was forced to to counterpick something, too. That was kind of, I think, pretty late in the game. Uh, and so I had to counterpick Space Marine Two, kind of hoping maybe that gets another delay or something because. I, I think that game could easily be in the 70s. So I, I'll be right there with you losing at least that, that many points, I think. Uh, I have uh, Flight Simulator, Dawn Trail, and Dragon Quest Three HD 2D. Uh, man, th- this one's a lot harder because uh, there's so many people paying attention as opposed to the Giant Bomb one where I was able to get Bellatro <laughs> uh, kind of easily for a dollar. Uh, but oh, n- <sighs> next time. No one knew. We we none of us knew. No, I'm not crazy. Sure That's such a good website. Jan talked about on the the Bombcast, one of the most popular video gaming podcasts in the world. And, yeah, and you got it like right after the show. You look. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, that's gonna do it for our summary for this period. Uh, like I said, this is a nice little thing that we like to do to say thank you to all the podcast producers. The league is full, but like with last time, sometimes people drop out if they're not really feeling the game. And if a spot opens up, I'll let everyone know. And the next update and then you can reach out to bob if you would like to pick up that spot and play for the rest of the year because this is this is a battle to the end of the year and we're only a third of the way through so anything could happen anything could change who knows where we're gonna end up when it's all said and done when do i get my super drop is that a super drop to come come later in the year or do we not have super drops it's a super drop i think we just have them now don't we i thought this it, says uh, i have zero super started. drops available on, in my mm, thing uh, maybe we'll i used... talked about about okay. that uh the logistics there but we do need to get our counter picks by uh a certain time too i believe that's september september 1st is when we get that benji bop he says he says that's when we get the super drop okay okay, okay. interesting all right there you go so you can't fill it up before then if i'm like wanting to get games between now and then interesting cool all right well thank you for that bop thank you for that sean uh Thank you for for uh, losing to me so far in that, Mike. That helps after me yeah, losing the arcade go. draft. I appreciate it. That's something. I'll take it. Um, all right, but I think what we should do now is get the hell out of here. What do you say? Why don't yeah, you read I'm the done. super chats first? Why don't we no, read the super nice chats too. first? That's interesting. That's a good thought. I guess we'll do That's it. That's a good idea. Uh, all right, from Lairs, I got a backbone controller from my newish Samsung phone, and like all the streaming and emulation it can handle, I want to tempt myself to get a Steam Deck, though. Do you think the upgrade is worth it? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, now, if you're happy using the Backbone controller on your phone, um, you're a better person than I am. I don't think I would. I, I don't actually enjoy doing that. Um, but even in your case, I think the Steam Deck is an improvement. I, and I would like. I think I would point to. I think Greg Miller used to do the Backbone thing a lot. And I think he also enjoys his Steam Deck quite a bit. So I think uh, for your kind of people, you will get a lot of use out of it. Jacob Bench said, is it bad that I haven't played any of these games talking about arcade games? No, but it probably means you're not in your 30s. Yeah, that it just means that you're a younger person, which you are, Bench, right? Yeah, probably. Uh, the Andrew said, how do you all miss Cruising USA and Silence Go? I, I thought, thought it, about Cruising I USA. Thought about Cruising USA. There's better. There's, even as, as popular as that was, there's better racing games to pick. Silent Scope, I guess, might have been interesting. I don't know. Silent Scope's fun. <laughs> even, even in its prime, there's something about it that made me kind of uncomfortable. Like, oh, this is a real cold uh soulless way to <laughs> murder people isn't it yep and then mike says love you guys i know you guys have been down down on AEW. i prefer it personally last night's show excluded is it really that bad no 50 minute promos lol this is the first super chat from mike thank you so much um i man i was such an aw rider die for a while there uh like I wasn't uh, uh, the elite got me back into wrestling when I was out of it. I was at the first all in. I was so excited. Those first couple years of AEW. I, I, I wish I remember who did this, but I saw somebody saying this today and it was about them airing that backstage footage stuff of punk where there was a time where AEW felt like this real premium kind of prestige product. And maybe it's not as popular. It was kind of like, uh, you know, maybe AEW or maybe like like WWE is Kia and AEW is like a, a Lexus or something. I don't know. It's, they're not so as many of them, but there's something premium about it. 
And it seems like AEW desperately wants to be a Kia also. And, you know, hey, the like AEW, like wrestling's always a bit of a carny show. I get it. But there was something about just showing that footage as some weird, like, attempt to get back at CM Punk that felt um, kind of trashy. And it wasn't and successful, just, right? I mean, I, even if it's well, like, like it, it bumped the ratings a bit, which of course it did. But well, of course it did that. But I mean, like, did anyone come out of it looking better? Uh, I don't get the sense that people mm -hmm. are like, I, I saw a lot of people being like, this proves that CM Punk, everything he said was true. I'm like, was that the problem? I don't think anyone was like, oh, he was lying about that. I think the problem is that he choked a person, but. Right, but like, I think I, did, there, I think a lot of people are like, yeah, that's what CM Punk said happened in it. And it is like, you watch it and it is, it is kind of almost like, in some ways it was almost not as intense as I was expecting, right? It's like, yeah, I mean, I guess those two people had a scuffle backstage and hey, look. CM Punk should have been fired. He clearly was no longer a good fit at AEW, but I, nothing was really accomplished by uh, showing that. I, you know, I miss when AEW was really leaning into the quote unquote sports sport based presentation, right? Me too. Like even less storyline stuff. Um, you know, like when they were talking about rankings and things like that. AEW still has a ton of good wrestlers when they do like big events. They usually are almost always good because those wrestlers go out there and they wrestle real good but there's just there's just some weirdness with AEW right now especially at a time when wwe is just kind of doing a lot right yeah and uh wrestling's up and down all the time uh so while AEW's down at the moment uh like people are watching tna impact again uh so if tna can have a resurgence aew certainly can sure. um so they'll they just need to get stuff cleaned up you know wwe was down uh in a pretty bad way not too long ago, and now they're on top of the world. So these things will come and go. Uh, I will be watching AEW here and there, and I'm sure they'll have some sort of resurgence. All right, Mike, I'm going to hit the button. Hit it. All hit right, it everybody. Uh, we're going to get out of here. Mike, what do you got going on? Uh, I think I might be on some stuff tomorrow at Giant Bomb. I don't know what it is or what's yeah, happening. Can you, what's can, happening on can you do the month? UPF thing for me? Yes, I meant to re reply, and I did in my head, and I never did to you directly. Can you do the Fallout thing? Oh yeah, you want me to play your mods? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Which 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 Fallout game should I install? You, nothing. You don't do anything. It's all in my parsec. Oh, it's parsec. Machine. Yes, I got it all Fancy. set up. So I've I've, okay. I've done the work there. I'm gonna do a little bit more work to make sure it all works fun. and functions. But I believe it does. Uh, so yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, basically, we're gonna have Mike play a, a very modded version of Fallout 4. So last chance to send your uh, tweets to me with like suggestions for mods uh the sillier the better of course but anything really goes I've, i think i've already installed like a hundred um so oh my god yeah it's gonna it's gonna be messed up um that'll be happening on giant bomb tomorrow um you got any plans for the weekend bud uh, i think we're going i'm going out with some friends tomorrow night uh i feel like just and uh, there might be something else i don't know i'd like to do nothing but i think i had to socialize a bit and stuff yeah i, I understand i'm gonna I think I'm gonna try to do nothing, but I probably have plans. You know, I think Steph's got a trip coming up pretty soon. And that's gonna be a headache. I need to figure out how I'm, how I'm gonna handle work when that's happening. Cause then when the kids right. get off the bus, I gotta like leave shows in the middle of it. So we'll see. Yeah, hey, five more thumbs up. Don't make me force an awkward silence. I'll make Jeff stop the music. Hey, stop the music. What are you doing? I'm not, I'm not gonna stop the music. Unless, yeah, stop the music. We got so Mike, far. Mike yells at me wow. that I will, but yeah. Now they'll push it on the yeah, goodness gonna, of their they're hearts gonna press, anyway. I believe in them. They're going to press yeah, the like button. They'll push that button. It's going to be, it's gonna be and great. And give Mikey Man, what no, he needs. Three digits. I tried, I tried playing Mortal Kombat Mythologies yesterday, and it just wasn't happening. I just couldn't get a run going. I tried for like an hour and 30 minutes, and I could not get out of stage two yesterday for some reason. What do you think? Bad. Is it um, just a bad funk, or you need a break, or what? I think it was a little funk. I'm not going to try this. I think I'm not going to speed run it this weekend, at least. Maybe, yeah, maybe take don't a little force bit. It. We'll see. Yeah. Maybe take a little bit of a break, because... It, 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 I mean, I'm going to have to start grinding again is a problem, but it's hard to grind when you can't get out of stage, too. Mike Venati never stops grinding, everybody. Until next time, have a good one. Take care of yourself, and goodbye. My Dixie <laughs> Rex. Most people are beating it right now. Oh, good. What is this, Jeff? I, I don't want to be racist, but I think he did it. <laughs> is that. <laughs>
Chris, did you change your name on Steam to Free OJ?